Another CEO Wisdom Pod today with Leon Gordon. He is founder and CEO at Onyx Data. So we're going to talk about a bunch of interesting things, notably data, um, Power BI, analytics, uh, diversity, and AI. Leon, welcome to the pod. Can you briefly introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Onyx? Definitely, Charles. Thank you. Absolute pleasure to be here with you. So as you mentioned, um, I'm currently the CEO and founder um, of an analytics and AI consultancy called Onyx Data. Um, I've been in and around the analytics and AI space for over a decade now. Um, I'm currently one of 33 Microsoft MVPs in the UK, and I also contribute um, to the likes of Forbes regularly as well um, with general thought leadership on both data and AI. Um, in terms of Onyx, um, again, we were founded in 2019, and we become strategic partners with organizations that are looking to leverage data and AI and really use these to generate revenue and efficiencies across, the, across their organizations. Interesting. So data is kind of boring, depending on who you talk to, like people that know that data is the new goal, they're quite uh, fascinated by it and lots of serotonin when we talk about data because they can monetize it. What do you say to people or business owners that think uh, data is boring? Um, I think that they're not utilizing data data correctly, and I'll just um, go back to the to the to the comment you mentioned there in in terms of um, data is the is the new gold, um, or the, I'd like to say data is a new oil, but it's it's no good having an oil spill that's in your back garden, right? Um, because you have all of this oil, it's spilling everywhere, it's creating a mess. You have no idea what to do with it. So at that point, it's not it's not very good, right? It can be it won't be boring at that point because you have oil coming through your house and over your garden, etc. Um, but at that point, it's not a um, it's not a valuable asset to you. What you need to be able to do is utilize this data, compartmentalize it, and then be able to distribute it similar to a massive oil spill um, in your backyard. You want to be able to put a rig on top of that and then be able to push that data or that oil out across the organization. So I always um, try to tell businesses that you're only finding data boring um, because it's not aligning with your business values and, and what you're looking to achieve. Right. How do you help uh, businesses make good use of data? Does it start with classification? Is it done for you? Is it done with you? Tell us a bit more about your business. Definitely. So as I mentioned before, we tend to partner with organizations um, and really align in terms of what the business value drivers are for the organization, what the business is prioritizing. OK, and then we un we understand how their data estate is. Now, this is down to their data quality, how data literate the organization is. And we put together um, sometimes it's small proof of concepts, POCs, or other times it's larger projects um, that we put we drive in line with those business goals. Goals. So, for example, one of those overarching business goals might be to um, to generate 15% 15, 15 more revenue than, than the previous year. OK, how can we utilize data to do that? Can we identify patterns with upselling and cross-selling existing products? Do we have are we missing? Do we have cancellations across the organization? Cancellations potentially could be at 50% or 40%. How do we drive that number down to 25% to in turn drive more revenue and repeatable? business so we use data um and obviously our, our experience to drive these goals forward love it you started your career as a footballer how is the transition from this to entrepreneurship um very very different so um the football seems like a long time ago now um but a lot of those core skills still remain so the teamwork collaboration determined driven towards a goal all all remain in 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 data um and the journey's been a long one so i started at the bottom of 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 data by doing data entry and gradually worked my way up upskilling uh, learning new skills etc and also taking opportunities and making the most of networking opportunities as well you're an editor contributor you write a lot um how does that factor in your whole business generation strategy um what's the goal behind all of these posts of yours yeah, so I wouldn't say it's business generation. Um, for me, it's more knowledge share. So it, even when we are working with organizations, it's about taking those organizations on journeys. Um, as you mentioned before, not everybody is data literate. Not everybody understands or, or thinks data 
can do anything they think it's boring as you mentioned now for me it's more about taking people on a journey in terms of how they can harness data and how it becomes relevant for their business and how this can work for them okay now in terms of my writing um, a lot of my writing is aimed at people that are trying to come into the industry so as as you mentioned before so my background isn't in in um, the the technological space it's in the sports space so when I was coming into the industry there weren't many people like myself who were actively making foundations or ways for people like me to come into the industry so a lot of my writing is geared more towards education um, as a opposed to to revenue generation love it and how do you make sure people get your message is it a combo of education and uh entertainment like how do you write what's your style and how do you make sure the information stays in the brain generally i like to hand i like i like to pass over tips okay i, I think the knowledge is best shared um, no matter what level of experience you, you you have you can always learn more so i tend to look at um, ways of achieving a solution um, so for example the top five ways that the, the ai can help your financial analytics department etc um, and what this does is it gets the it gets individuals um, and departments brains thinking um, and communities as well of how they can then harness these tools now um, I don't know if it's the same for yourself, Charles, but for me, whenever um, I'm passionate about learning something, I can see that it's going to be it's something I'm interested in. I will spend more time and go to more blogs, more articles, etc. So it's really about the peaking and pivoting that interest and then letting people go on that journey. Yeah, right. And writing, I guess, is a one of the top four form of information synthesis uh, to really understand yourself, the information once you write and once you try to teach it, once you try to simplify it, I guess one of the best way to to learn about stuff. Um, AI notably, I guess, is uh, in a boom right now. Uh, we have focused a lot of our attentions as business owners on AI and tried to learn out on the topic. What have you learned about AI that surprised you lately? Um, I, I think that if, if you don't mind, if I can answer that slightly differently. So what surprised me lately with AI is mass adoption. OK, now we've seen um, other technologies come and go. So we've had Metaverse, Web 3.0, etc. Now, generally, when you're having those conversations, even crypto, crypto to a certain extent um, had mass adoption to, to to a really smaller extent but everybody wasn't talking about it now you have um, the lay person also using ai in their day by day and intentionally using it so it's not the fact that your phone is using ai or your washing machine or your toaster etc and it's it's kind of um it's consequential that you're using it people are going out of their way to to use these to be more efficient so i think for me that's really been um the biggest point is that it's been mass adopted at pace as well um which is which is both exciting and and scary how should I use the data generated from this podcast? Should I generate the Charles AGI and then have my uh, my elders counsel? So every time I have a question, I would uh, have a, a Leon Gordon answering me about uh, data uh, because I'm recording you right now. I'm recording your words and so forth. How should I use this data to, to build some kind of AI system? If you do that, I would love to use it. Um, and I'd also love to get some of the royalties for that. Um, but no, in, in all seriousness, this is what I mentioned in terms of um, the dangers that potentially come with this type of technology, okay? Um, and this is why um, a lot of us within this space are kind of lobbying for legislations. Um, I don't think that we should slow down adopt. Of, of, of this type of tool whatsoever we've seen it across um human history um the best way of saying this i always mention is the screwdriver you have a conventional screwdriver uh, which is slow but still does the job you have what's known as a ratchet screwdriver which is slightly faster does the job and then you have the electric screwdriver okay now humans are always going to seek more efficient routes um, of getting to the end goal so this is nothing new here um what becomes the problem is just like you mentioned um is the deep fakes um which we've all seen um, from the AI generation and how this gets uh, legislated. A good example of that, I don't know if you watch Black Mirror. I don't know if I should be promoting the new series of Black Mirror. I watched the um, first one, so don't give me anything after the first one. <laughs> Well, fortunately, it's actually the first one where they where they recreate the, the in the new series where they recreate the, yeah, the Netflix series. Very good. 
Exactly. So um, those type of scenarios and and those that we've seen portrayed in 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 media um, across the board could could potentially happen a lot sooner than than we expect. I think there's already laws in place for that, though. Um, it you know, Black Mirror is really a, a dystopia. I, legally, you can't do that in this current world. You know, it's completely bullish. And even if there wasn't any laws with that it just common sense that a judge would rule against the company you cannot use someone's image against them you know whatever uh, contract you had them sign uh you know it's just like a, it would it, it would be waived because it's it's such common sense that you can uh, not defame someone with that um and yeah there was really some weird aspects you know like can the cell phone uh, data fully recreate your avatar like, why was she bringing her cell phone with her at this point, you know? But it was really, really good. Uh, Black Mirror is, like, one of my uh, favorite series. Uh, talking about this, you know, one of my favorite business ideas nowadays on, on the same in the same vein is uh, taking deceased artists um, and, you know, they have foundations managing their music, most of the time owned by their family. And one of my biggest um, investment ideas would be to probably invest a hundred million in each of those, let's say Michael Jackson's foundation, uh, own 25% of it. And yeah, like just uh, let the AI reproduce the uh, Michael Jackson music and I would reap, ton reap tons of benefits. I do think that there's, the current laws are currently there to defend my ownership over that. Plus I do think there's gonna be more, um, more uh, court uh, rulings uh, that would establish the jurisprudence kind kind of on the topic. What do you think about that idea? Um, so uh, for me, laws exist, okay, um, and and laws are regularly broken. We saw this time and time again with deep fakes. Um, I won't go into detail. Everybody's aware of what happened with um, people's faces being put on on different people's bodies, etc. We've all seen the Kanye AI generated, or sorry, heard the Kanye AI generated um, a song, etc. So I don't think the legislations are overarching enough globally currently to stop this type of information and the problem the problem with this approach as well charles is that uh, a lot of the lay people are like i say or lay persons not technical persons um are absorbing this technology and pushing data into it that that, that shouldn't be pushed into it because it's they, they had they're not data literate enough to be able to, to to utilize it in that manner so i think that what we're what we're going to see and what we've already what we're already seeing um is the formation of a multitude of ai companies who are receiving a lot of backing and funding um currently as well there's uh, i would say there's at least a thousand ai companies being spun out a day at the day at the moment and new tooling so i expect this to continue um because of the mass adoption i expect this to continue at pace um and everybody will be chasing the new gpt or large language model um in 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 the future which is not a bad thing um but i expect this technology to ramp up very very quickly and, and quicker than, than people are currently expecting right i think you know deep fake um it's the, the challenge is where to prosecute these people, you know, um, because if if you think about it, you know, first there's the platform, right? The platform is the website. They should be prosecuted if they uh, host a deep fake. So it needs to be in the company's policy to remove these videos. I watched a documentary about uh, Pornhub not so long ago. And yes, they were made responsible for underage um, content. I don't think that was a, the problem with this company in itself. It's most uh, most likely porn, but that's another topic for another day. Um, and because these actors that created the deepfake, I mean, they can run away pretty much forever. You know, these these folks are good at hiding. That's what they do. Um, then what are the incentives to produce that deepfake, right? Like, is it that they're going to be paid at the end of the day? Um, and if so, like, well, the platform has all the, the subscribers, all the traffic, and the, the platform should be accountable for that. Now, when it comes to text and analyzing text like ChatGPT did uh, with Wikipedia and Reddit and all that, then that is like such a hard problem because how will you know that they trained on your data? Well, do you, did you have proof that they send their scrapers on your on your website? There's scrapers that don't leave a trace, I would guess. So how would you crack that one? And what is your 
opinion on that form of data because me like as a an ultra libertarian well almost uh, ultra libertarian i would allow an ai to learn off that data if it can benefit the whole population if it's to destroy humanity then obviously not what are your thoughts on that well my, my question would be who who decides that so who who decides if if an ai should or could or or should be allowed to train on data that can potentially destroy all of all of humanity it seems like a fairly easy question to answer um but we've noticed um with 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 gpt3 3.5 and 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 ultimately 4 as well that there's been hallucinations which have, have obviously calmed down slightly now uh, and we've also seen that they can be misled okay um, now, nobody knows that really whether the future of this technology in, in a lot of detail, it's not sentient. Um, so we, we, we're fully aware of that and that we need that to become um, more readily absorbed into in the public eye as well. But again, citing back to the problem with mass adoption is that, and it's similar with, with, with Tesla, right? Is that Tesla was, or one of Tesla's main selling points is that it's a self-driving car, okay? It's not a self-driving car. It has enhanced autopilot, which is very different, okay? OK, but this is the problem with the value proposition uh, where we are with AI at the moment is that it's being sold as an all seeing, all dancing. I can do your job tool. So companies now to to come to market with this type of proposition have to match that or or be above that. OK, now the layperson, technical people potentially will see through that. Like I say, people that are familiar with large language models, et cetera, um, but the layperson that w won't. And so what that what that forces is an economic shift as well, where a lot of the marketing material is prepared with that in mind and with that being the main goal to sell to these people. And the technology is pushed and driven forward towards that type of goal. Now, as we know, it's similar with the with the birth of the Internet. The Internet was a revolution. OK, is the Internet always used in ethical ways? No. Of course not. And it's similar to to all technologies out there. It's it's down to the user. We have to understand that AI is a tool that we are using and 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 harnessing. Like you like you mentioned, when it's used in ethical ways, like um drug research, cancer research, etc. And, and there's there's been quite a lot of um fantastic breakthroughs in, in those in those type of areas, it's great. Um when it's used in, in harmful ways, it's it's not so good, um, but unfortunately, it's yin and yang, and it's always going to be the case. Uh, you're always going to get some good with some with some bad, unfortunately. Far in the future, I really think there's going to be an algorithm telling how much value you add and you take as a human. I think how that's how the world will be regulated. I think there's going to be a currency that's going to be that. Hopefully, I think this should bring some form of alignment, not necessarily related with AGI, but just with us humans uh, and uh, if you do good in this society or not. Um, shorter term, I think a billion dollar idea, and, and it probably exists, you're, you're in that field, but it's an API, right, to leverage your data. So like me, I'm this company, I have tons of data and I can give it to other companies in a private fashion and I get paid for it, you know? So is there, does that billion dollar company exist as of now? So marketplace, we, a, a, a data marketplace, but API related private data, and I get paid for the data I share. Yeah, so there's there's smaller stores of that, and we've worked with with multiple companies to give them what we call data products, which is harnessing the data that they generate, and then selling those to third parties using using APIs, generally on the subscription on the subscription basis. Now, as you mentioned, there's lots of legislations to walk through. Um, probably a good and a bad example of this is 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 Facebook, right? So this is this is generally how Facebook made their their money was was harvesting everybody's data and building out massive advertisement models. Um, off the back of that, that's no secret. And we all know the scandals that, that erupted off of the off of the back of that. But potentially that's the that's the kind of scenario that we're moving into. Now, I've spoken at length um, with lots of people who have lots of different backgrounds. So, for example, we've spoken about how um, computer vision AI um, models will be able to aid people that are blind through cities in, in real time using some form of headwear um, and been able to walk them um, through cities and telling them in real time where things are um, and similar types of, of 
of kind of initiatives that 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 aid life. So I think that there's going to be a plethora of not just billion but trillion um, dollar companies. I think Nvidia um, just just got the um, the trillion dollar mark if I'm if I'm not mistaken, very recently. And I expect that to to continue in the tech space. Now with everything, I think there's going to be a plateau. I'm not too sure. I don't think this is a bubble. Um, but I'm again, Charles, the point you mentioned in terms of judging um, humans on on what's good and what's bad. Um, it, it, I, I don't feel it's as black and as white as that, um, unfortunately, because some things that are good for some people are bad for others. Um, I, I won't I don't have an opinion personally on this, but something I can cite is um, what's known. Well, or what I will describe as um mercy um or assisted um um assisted death I, I don't know if that's the correct term or not so excuse me um but some people would say that that's more that's moral um and morally correct to assist people that are in pain um that are asking you to 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 end their life with them um and others will say no that's 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 morally incorrect how how does an ai decipher um the difference in those type of scenarios I think it would only be a minority of people. I think it would be very much related to some communities. For example, religious communities do not believe in assisted suicide, uh, which is probably the right word. I think in Switzerland, it's uh, it, it's legal. But yeah, you're you're totally right, and that that would lead to my my next point, which is basically that the future of this world is community based, right? So do I need to? talk about like the my own country that I would start not really it, it, and it's probably micro community so first it would start with a country right uh, where the borders are and then it would probably be to your city so your city would have even more weight uh, in the the vote of what is good and what is not good and finally your micro community um, and that can be in a city or that can be like who you you think you're part of for example me I identify myself as a founder mostly. So if I could be in a founder community or a CEO community, um, we would vote in percentage of, of what we think is, is good and bad, and we would try to apply it. And if I'm not happy with their their thoughts and their value, I think I, I would move myself away um, from that. And yeah, uh, assisted euthanasia is uh, certainly an interesting one, right? Like what what about that in a world in which we can revive people and in which people can live forever? These these are all like uh, very much valid questions. I think that folks need to have more data though to make better, uh, more enlightened decisions. So again, like education, as you've seen when we started this, this interview, I think is one of my main interests. How would you make sure that um, normal citizens get accurate and and clean pieces of data in their brain. Yeah, so I, I think that with where we are at the moment, we're probably that you, you mentioned this kind of um, utopia that we're that we're walking into for those that are te te technical. We this is what we wanted, right? We wanted everything to be interconnected and to and to get to this. Now, in terms of education, um, it worries me um, because a lot of um, of the of children coming coming growing growing up now are very um what's the word I'm 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 looking for uh, disconnected um from 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 reality um at the moment and, and and adults as well right so um you can just walk down the street and you'll see everybody looking down at their phones um as opposed to embracing um what's what's around them which is that a good is that a bad thing again who who decides right because um, they might be hyper connected to their version of their world you know and who are we to judge i mean yeah like the 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 back end to that would be that they are not connected to this society in which they're living and it's backfiring against i think that's when it starts to be evident that they shouldn't uh be addicted to tiktok in their mobile it's when it's when they they have problems swimming in this sea of life right and they're struggling they can't get a job they they can't get a stable relationship or they're they're constantly unhappy i guess that that is when their decisions and the the quality of data entering their brain is can be worse. But I guess like that's that's how potentially we would answer that question. I'm sure if you asked the CEO of TikTok and 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 TikTok employees that same question, they would they would give the counter answer to that in terms of yes, it's great to be to be um, 
on your device and, and tuned into your device. So, so this is this is why we have to work with um, data biases. Okay. So you mentioned previously in terms of communities, if you were in a co sorry in a founder or a CEO community, it would be a group of of of, of, of individuals that have a common um, common goal, coming together and and working on solutions using AI, etc. Now, what would happen is you would have a very biased set. Of, of, of users in that community. Similarly, if we asked um, the Russian government how they felt about, about war currently, or or, or or other people that, or other or, um, nations that are, that are currently warmongering, you would get a very biased opinion. Okay, and this is why I think it's it's it, it's it, the biases in AI are going to play a large a large point. And I kind of alluded to it earlier in terms of who decides. Okay, right, because. Um, Bias is the right word there. There is a truth and there is a non-truth in, in my opinion. And biases need to be maintained and checked. In our day and age, most of the bi these biases are capitalism related, right? You mentioned Russia, capitalism, power, right? Um, TikTok, the same. We've seen some companies made some decisions um, that are ethical. And I think ethical is equal to scale. Ethics is equal to long-term. Ethics is equal to even more money. I do think that all of these decisions, they're short-term based. In Russia, they're, they'll probably use a couple trillions as a result of this bad decision, this ego, this short-term related decision. For TikTok, the same. Um, I'm, am I going to hook these uh, kids to a screen only to have them find out that it's ruining their lives? You're going to have a revolt. You know, Apple made the decision to have the screen time on, on their phones. I believe that Samsung uh, followed up with that. And by showing that they care about the people, they're, they're building this long-term perennial brand. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I, I would to accept to a certain extent. I think that there's there's no two ways around it. Um, we we are in a totally different world now. We have been since well, at least since COVID. So I think that the, the COVID nineteen scenario accelerated the adoption of technology across business countries, etc. And again, mass adoption. Okay, so people that were in the office twenty four seven were forced to work from home. The infrastructure that was put in place to facilitate that was 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 the, the global. Um, um, and then we now have the implementation of AI, which again is 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 global. Now, what we're seeing here is ushering in, in my opinion, um, some call it the era of AI, some call it the era of technology, etc. The nanotech, which, whichever we want to look at it, we have we have entered and embarked onto onto a, onto a new era in terms of how humans interact go by the day by day business. And some of that does need to feed into the children. They have to be aware of this to be able to thrive and survive in this environment. And I'm sure that when you were younger, similar to myself, you, you embraced the technology that was available to you then, whether it was a leather football rather than a plastic football, or I don't know, a jumping stick rather than hopscotch. There have been technological advancements, how, however small, throughout all of our childhoods, uh, from Pong to Sega Genesis and so on and so forth. So this is just another phase of that. The, 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 the great shift here is the amount of time and, and, and how infused it, it has become in everybody's lives and how accessible it now is 24-7. Okay. Last but not least, Leon, I do think it is my personal opinion that diversity and inclusion, these words have been somewhat ruined by uh, people pursuing uh, a capitalism uh, perspective or, or uh, goals in the last couple of years. It's quite harsh as an opinion, but that is my opinion. Uh, how, how I would rephrase that is how can we include progressivism or if, that, if that's even a word um, in AI, how can we have this AI depict reality, but tell this AI, like, look, we want to give not equal. I don't like the word equal as well, but how can we give these people a shot at success? How can we give these people a shot at evolution? And yes, this world is, is hard. It's, it will always like put some barriers in you. How can we make sure that, yeah, th these people have a, a shot at, at success um, for the, the diversity and inclusion uh, conversation? 
And unfortunately, I think, again, it's one of those human uh, traits that's, that's baked in. Uh, you see this down to sports teams. Um, so if you if you follow a sports team, you'll know that when you're playing against a rival sports team, everybody picks a side, wears their shirt and supports that team regardless. Um, now, what happens is when those same two teams are playing at the national level, um, everybody puts on a national shirt, comes together and supports the national team, okay? Now, if you expand that to other demographics um, that we're talking about in diversification, it's very much the same. It's a baked in human trait. It's Apple and iPhone. You have adopters of both. It's Sony, Xbox, Microsoft, et cetera. You're always going to get that in, in, in humanity. It's not something that's going to go away overnight. Um, potentially, if we ever had to come back, it's, sorry, if we ever had to come together as a global as a, as a global force against something to preserve Earth or something like that. It's when you would see, again, all of that community levels come together, race, creed, sex, et cetera. Um, there would be no biases at that point. But I think that unfortunately it's fundamentally baked in um, to, to humanity to, to want to be part of those groups or communities, um, unfortunately. So I don't see, um, it, it, it's unfortunate, um, but I can't see a way that we escape that. Um, we might be able to, to reduce that um, in AI by baking it in, um, in scripted and in code. That, and I think that there's potential to do that because it is a good topic of, of conversation. And that way we have a control of it. But when you see the numbers coming out of police reports in terms of people that are pulled over in all different countries, et cetera, um, it's, it's, it's fundamentally um, the same across across the globe. The percentages may differ slightly, but it, it's, it's fully baked in. So unfortunately, I don't think that that's something we're going to change in human DNA, uh, not in my lifetime anyway. Because it, it is my understanding that folks at the top um, that are more enlightened and that have I, higher IQ and EQ um, do naturally include uh, people. For example, me from day one, it's, that's why inclusion is not like often a topic of mine is just that from scratch, I've been diverse and inclusive, wh whatever that means. You know, as someone that made it, I want to give the shot to other young folks, not only because I'm, I'm a good person, just because I understand also that they can be like very helpful to me, right? Like young blood is is really good and that different perspective and so forth. So, but yeah, interesting uh, problem, to say the least. Uh, you got to run. Uh, so where can people find out more about you, Leon? LinkedIn is the platform of choice. So please do feel free to join me on LinkedIn. I'm sure Charles will share um, the link. Also, you can just type in Leon Gordon, um, come and follow me, enjoy furthering these conversations. Um, and Charles, it's been an absolute pleasure sitting down with you. I wish this could have gone on longer. We've got so many topics yeah. to explore. Round two coming up soon, guys.